Okay, we're having a look at direct and inverse variation. Now, this is specifically tailored to a unit one topic for maths methods. So when we talk about direct variation, we can say that y is proportional to x. So if we want to write it with the equal sign, we need to write that y is equal to kx. So it's going by a common factor um, that it's increasing by. If we're writing our inverse, we write y is proportional to 1 over x. So the inverse is where we put the 1 over. And then if we want to do that as with the equal sign in, we make it k over x. They're the two things that we need to be able to do. One, write that statement, change it to where we have the k in it um, for those two scenarios. Now I've picked one to start with that isn't just a proportional to x. I thought I'd do y is proportional to x squared. So in this case, we've been given some information to help us solve for the k. So that's what we need to do first. So we'll write our y equals kx squared. Now you'll notice I write kx squared rather than kx because we're told it's proportional to x squared. So I know that when y is eight, x is equal to two, so I can write k times two squared. Now two squared is four, so eight equals four k, which means k would be equal to two. Now I can check that here. So if I do um, two x squared, I should get 32. So four squared is 16, when I multiply it by 2, I get 32. So that works. So my equation then that I'm going to be using is y equals 2x squared. So when I'm working out this missing value here, my x is 6. So I'll do 2 times 6 squared. 6 squared is 36. 2 times 36 is 72. Now here I'm working backwards. So I know that I have my y is 128. And that's equal to 2 x squared and I'm trying to find out my x. So I divide by 2 first which is going to give me 64 and then to get what my x is I'll do the square root of 64 which is 8. Now following the pattern there we probably assumed it was going to be 8 but we didn't know they were necessarily going to keep going up in the same pattern but there's our x equals 8. In the next one um, I've got it there's a different format that we've been given it so we've got that the volume is proportional to r squared. Then it says when uh, v is equal to 125, r is equal to 2.5. So when we write our v equals k r squared, this is going to allow us to work out what the k is. So we've got 125 is equal to k times 2.5 squared. Now when I do 2.5 squared, I get 6.25. So I've got that 125 is equal to k times 6.25. So to get what my k is, I'm going to divide both sides by 6.25. And I'll get k is equal to 20. So in this case, all I was doing was finding out that uh, k value and putting it back in to my equation. I wasn't solving anything with it. So I can just write 20 r squared. In the next one, we've now got one where it's inversely proportional. And instead of just the one on x, I've gone with the x squared again, just to show you that different scenario. Obviously, there's going to be examples with um, just the x in your textbook, but I thought I'd do these ones because they're a little bit different to the standard. So 1 over x squared. And I've been giving that table just like I had up here. So what I'll do first is do that, changing it to 1 over kx squared. And then I'm going to substitute in these values to try and work out what the k is. So if I've got um, y is equal to k and x squared, and I've got 3 is equal to k over 1 squared, k over 1 means my k will be 3. I want to do that check here though. So if I've got a 2 here, I'm going to, so that would make my equation y equals 3 on x squared. That means I will be doing 3 divided by 2 squared. Now, 2 squared is 4. 3 divided by 4, that is the 3 quarters that we've got there. So we know we've got the right equation. That's our equation. To find this missing value here, I've got my x value is 3. So I'm going to do 3 divided by 3 squared. Now, 3 squared is 9. So I would have 3 over 9. But I can um, simplify that to 1 over 3. Here, we're working backwards. So now we've got our y value is 1 over 12. We know that's 3 over x squared. Now, what I could do 
is um, change this part to have a 3 on the top. Um, another option, I'll bring my x squared over. So I get x squared over 12 is equal to 3. And then they get the x squared on its own. I'll times by 12, so I get 36. And then I'll do the square root and get 6. If I went this route and did change that to a 3, then that would have to be 3, and I'm realising off the screen there, 3 over 36. And I'd have the 3 on the top. That would be giving me my x squared is 36, like I got over here, and get x equals 6. So there's a couple of little ways, depending what your algebra level is like. Now, the last one that I wanted to look at is one of the worded ones. So we've got the current I varies inversely to the resistance R. So I can write that as, and I think I might switch to my finer pen, we've got I is equal to K over R. So I could have written the other one first, proportional to 1 over R, but I went straight to my K over R. If the current is 3 amperes when the resistance is 80 ohms, find the current. Now students will often see that and go, oh, I don't know about amperes, I don't know about ohms, we don't need to worry about that. We know that the current is 3 and the resistance is 80. So where we see our current, because we've been told the current is the I, we're going to put a 3 and our resistance is 80. So to get the K value, I'm going to times by my 3 by 80, which is 240. And so I can then write that my current is equal to 240 over the resistance. Now, the second part of that question was to find the current when the resistance is 100 ohms. So the 100 was what we put with our resistance. So we're going to go I is equal to 240 over 100, which is going to be 2.4. Now, we should put next to there the amperes because we've been told that was the unit up the top. Now, in the second part, it talks about percentage increases. So it says, find the increase in resistance required to reduce the current to 80% of its original. So we'll start with saying, okay, if my original current was 1, then 80% of that would be 0 0.8. Uh, you could also use 100. As an option as well if you've got 100 and then 80 so we'll sub in the 1 to start with and I'll show you how you can do it with the 100 as well so if we sub in a 1 for I then we have 240 over R so then we bring our R over so our R must be equal to 240 if we then instead put 0 0.8 then our resistance would be I'll just put the full working out there. R is equal to 240 divided by 0.8. And I get 300. So my um, resistance has gone from 240 to 300. That is an increase of 60. But we want to know that as a percentage. So if it started as 240 and it's gone up 60, then that percentage is going to be our 60 divided by 240, which is 0.25 which we would change to 25%. Now, as I said, we could have gone with the 100. So having a look how that would work, we would put the 100 there. We would have 240 over R. So then that would be 100 R is 240. R is going to be 2.4. And then we would do the 80 and go 80 is equal to 240 on R. 80 R is equal to 240. R is equal to 240 over 80 and we would get 3 so then we can see that that has increased by 0 0.6 and then we would do 0 0.6 over 2.4 which was the original and see how we've got that same fraction 0 0.25 which is the 25 percent so that's another option so you can either go with the 1 and then the 0.8 or you can go with the 100 and the 80%, so the 100%, 80%. Both of them obviously work out the same. It's just up to you which one you prefer. Hope that is helpful for direct and inverse proportion.